What's up guys, it's Mike from Bathhouse TV and behind me today we have an E90 328XI that is throwing a bunch of lights on the instrument cluster related to the brake system, the ABS system, the transfer case system, and it can be an overwhelming issue. In the previous videos that we have on our channel, we've shown how to solve this issue by replacing a wheel speed sensor and a wheel bearing. But in this video, we're gonna show you a third issue that causes all these lights to illuminate and that is the transfer case actuator. So if what you see in this video doesn't lead you to a solution for your issue, don't be discouraged and go check out our other two videos. Between the three, you should be able to solve whatever issue is illuminating that Christmas tree of lights on your dashboard. So enough talking about it, let's go get into it. All right, so we're inside the car now. I'm gonna start it. And upon starting it, we get this. So four by four, DSC, ABS, brake light. It's kind of just doing all sorts of stuff. The other two, you can ignore the TPMS and the seatbelt light. So if you're having a similar set of lights like this, again, they call it the Christmas tree. We're gonna show you how to diagnose and repair it. All right, so also this is what the iDrive just throws up immediately. It's braking slash chassis stabilization malfunction. And then it gives you a description of the issue. All right, so the car is currently key on engine off. We have a Wi-Fi dongle in and we are connected to our scan tool. So here we're gonna go to multi ECU and we're going to read errors. So here it's gonna give us a full list of errors for the car. All right, so we have X drive system, which is the one that we're most worried about. And it says activation servo motor faulty. So that's pretty much telling us that there's a potential issue with the servo motor. The servo motor that they're talking about that's in question is the one on the back of the transfer case. I actually have a unit out on the floor over here, so I'm gonna show you exactly which one we're talking about. So it's this motor on the back of the transfer case. There's a worm gear inside that kind of moves in and out and engages all the gears inside here. And if this worm gear is slipping for any reason, sometimes the shaft breaks on it, there's a little thing that actually catches the gear that then starts to slip over time. It's plastic, I'm pretty sure. And that can also create an issue. There's a bunch of different reasons that this motor can fail, but it is prone to failure. It usually happens at around 100,000 miles, if not before or after, it's in that general region. So we're gonna actually use this used one for now, just because we're in a bit of a pinch. The car is just randomly doing this. It also had a ABS, sensor fault which we did first and it didn't go away. It did fix the ABS sensor fault but it still has the servo motor fault. Which brings me to my next thing. Sometimes it will say that it has an issue with the servo motor even though the issue is not related to the servo motor. So if you have a code saying that there's a servo motor failure, I wouldn't immediately go after it unless it's isolated by itself. If you have other things in the ABS system that are throwing codes, do those things first. Don't immediately go after the servo motor. But in our case, that is activation servo motor and it says faulty and there's a couple codes I think that say VTG which is transfer case and internal faults I think I have two internal fault codes when I go on ISTA or a different scan tool to look this up so we're assuming at this point we're confidently assuming I'd say that the servo motor is actually faulty and we're gonna replace it with that use unit we have gearbox oil wear that's normal the other one for the transfer case was also oil wear so we can do that while we're replacing this motor we have some stuff here to do it and if you look there's really not too much stuff okay here's so stability control we have two internal faults for transfer case transfer case internal internal and the brake pad wear sensor it actually just ripped in the rear so we're getting one sent over so we can ignore that no errors found anywhere else so just between the two transfer case internal faults there that's just a brake light FRM oil wear on the transmission, and then we have oil wear for the transfer case and transfer case actuator faulty. So two internal faults for ABS system and DSC related to the transfer case and a transfer case code saying that the actuator is faulty. I can confidently say that the transfer case actuator is the issue and that's gonna turn these lights off, solve our issue, and while we're there, we'll take care of that fluid change issue as well with some new fluid. We do have some DTF1 here as well as new drain and fill plugs. We should be able to do this entire job quickly and easily so let's get the car up on the lift support the transmission and we should be able to get right into it all right so we're underneath the car now I'm in the general location of the transfer case if you look at the back of the transmission slash transfer case mount you can see it's covered in fluid and whenever you see fluid back here it is more than likely coming from the output shaft seal on the transfer case it's never really a bad enough leak that it's gonna destroy the transfer case or anything but once you see it you should be thinking about removing the drive shaft and 
and actually going and replacing the seal at the back of the transfer case. There's a couple other parts associated with it. Like you should be replacing the hardware and then um, there's like a circ clip, a couple other things. But a lot of people think that that's the seal on the back of the transfer case actuator and normally it's not. It's a little bit higher up and we're gonna show you guys in a video, actually on the same car because we're gonna replace that in just a little bit. So look out for that video. We'll be posting that hopefully sometime soon. Anyways, what we're gonna do now is remove this transmission plate. We don't need to remove it for any other reason except I need to put my transmission jack underneath it and don't want to squish it. So we're gonna get that out of the way. And then this little one over here, just held in with a 10 millimeter right there and then a couple eight millimeters. So we're gonna get those two plates out real quick and then we'll get right back to you. All right, so now that we have both of those plates off, let's take our transmission jack. You guys can use anything that kind of just gets to the height that you're using. In our case, we're about halfway up on the lift, so we're gonna use the training jack. And you don't actually need to lift anything. We're just putting this here as a support. So as you remove this brace, right here this is gonna lower you can completely do this without this the support is just so you don't put extra stress on your engine mounts with your transmission out or your center support bearing or your guibo on the drive shaft so it will be held in place but it also makes it super difficult to push it back up and get the bolts back in afterwards i'll show you what i mean in just a moment best thing that you can do is put a jack underneath something that you can actually lift up and put down so that you can kind of move the transfer case transmission assembly as you work on it so we're just gonna lightly push this into place. You'll we'll see when it touches, right around there. All right, now we're gonna remove one, two, three, four, five, six, 13 millimeter bolts. One long one, long one, long one, and then these are the three short ones. I believe the torque spec on those is 19 newton meters. We're gonna go and remove this eight millimeter right here for the heat shield. Another one right up here behind the curve of the exhaust. If you want to do this without bending anything, you can remove the whole exhaust, but it really isn't necessary and it's something you can't bend back. So what we're going to do just to spare ourselves a ton of time is just take this heat shield down just a bit. I'm going to bend it out of the way like that. All right. It's going to give us access here to this bolt. It's a 16 millimeter bolt with a 18 millimeter nut in the back. So we're going to get an 18 millimeter and a 16 mil and break that free. All right. So what we're going to do is take the 18 millimeter. I like to use a box wrench and we're going to go right up here like that. Then we're going to take our 16 millimeter. I use a stubby with a 3 8 ratchet. Nice and long. And start loosening. Okay, remove the nut. The bolt with the exhaust in place is kind of a pain in the ass for lack of better words to remove. So what we're gonna do is pull on it and kind of attempt to wiggle it out of the bushing. And then we push it up. It's just like slightly too long. Sometimes what I'll do when they are a little more difficult is pull it down. Might have to go get a ratcheting wrench, but believe it or not, this is the worst part of this job, is just getting this bolt out. Okay, let me go grab a ratcheting wrench. actually threaded into anything right now it's just at the point where there's like too much of a degree of angle to easily pull the bolt out so we're just using the threads as like a way to guide it out you're not doing damage to anything by doing this and just like that you get the bolt out this is what the bolt looks like and then you need to just get it around the bushing like that, and our bracket is removed. While you're here, it's smart to inspect the transfer case bushing for wear and tear. This is something that is a common failure point on a lot of all-wheel drive transmission BMWs. So in the past, E46s were kind of like the first to utilize this type of bushing, and they do have a lot of failures. So you can see this one has a little bit of play. It definitely is older. Just gonna grab a light quick. 
All right, so we're just gonna inspect the bushing while we're here, kind of move it in all directions, and as long as there's no rips, you should be all set, and you don't have to worry about that immediately. So before we remove the transfer case actuator, what we're gonna do is make sure that our fill plug can be cracked free. So this is a 14 millimeter X or Allen key, and the reason we're gonna do the fill plug before the drain plug is so that we can make sure that we can get fluid back in. If you just break the drain plug free first, and you drain all the fluid out, and then for some reason you can't open the fill plug, then your transfer case is rendered useless. So we're gonna break that free first, we're gonna get a cash pan, and we're gonna also break free our drain plug, drain all the fluid out, and then we're gonna replace this actuator. So a pro tip for this job is it's kinda hard to get a 14 millimeter Allen key into these spots, so I bought a 14 millimeter Allen and actually cut down about an inch off it, and it creates a great tool for getting in just far enough to break these old ones free. The thing is, sometimes it doesn't get a great bite on it, so you wanna make sure it's in good, and always replace the drain and fill plugs, regardless of if you're using something like this or not. So with it in place like that, we're gonna break it free. Okay. Fully remove it. And now we can go break our drain plug free as well. Again, this is a 14 millimeter Allen, and Let's try to get this in here good. This is one of the tighter spaces where you need some kind of tool like this. Sometimes I actually just use that stubby end that I cut off of this piece right here. And then I'll just take a 14 millimeter ratchet or 14 millimeter box wrench and put that on to actually break these free and tighten them up. But let's see if we can get this free like this. Nope. Try that again. This one's a little rusty on the inside, so it's not gonna be as forgiving. So here's that piece I cut off of that Allen key, and we're gonna put that in like that. Put a 14 millimeter wrench on it. Pretty tight, so we're gonna do the double wrench method. Crack it free. We're gonna drain pan for underneath. And we're gonna drain out all this transfer case fluid. So the fluid is definitely Pretty burnt, doesn't smell great, but also still has some clarity to it, so that's a good thing to see, especially since it's throwing internal faults. There's no pieces of metal coming out, and it still is translucent to some degree. So, not bad, but definitely is gonna benefit from a fluid change. All right, so we're back at the rear of the transfer case looking at the actuator. You guys are at the left rear. So what we're gonna do first is take a pick and put it underneath this connector just loosely and pull the connector out, like so. Then up top on the transfer case, there's another connector. We're gonna, or the actuator. We're just gonna pinch it right here and pull, and that removes the wiring for the transfer case. So in order to access this bolt right here, we need to take this connector off. It's held in with an E7 e-torx. It's a very small e-torx. We're just gonna go like this. Might even actually even be a six. With that out of the way, we're gonna take an E10 and remove the three bolts. All right, and at this point, we can remove our transfer case actuator. All right, so we're obviously installing a used unit just for the time being until we can get a new unit. But we know this is a known working unit, so we're just gonna clean up the seal. I lubricated it a little bit with some transfer case fluid, and we're gonna reinstall it. And you wanna push it in until it clicks into place. You can see right there, it kinda locked in the gears. Do not force this thing in. If it is not seated against the transfer case, you do not have it in properly. So, once you have it in properly, start getting your bolts back in. Just tighten them all up until they make contact. All right, and now we're gonna go and torque all three of those larger ones to 22 newton meters per BMW specifications. Way tighter than I think you would think it is. I think it's just because the length of the bolts. And then I always like to double check that the first one 
is an under torqued after you torque the rest. So now we're gonna go and put the resistor back up, which is this little guy right here. I'm gonna use the resistor off of the actual dryer removed because I don't think it was an issue regarding the resistor. So this guy gets torqued to about five or six newton meters. It's something very small, so we're not gonna worry about putting a torque wrench on it. We're just gonna get it nice and snug. It sits in a groove, so as long as you have it in the general area, it should kind of lock into place as it gets tighter. We're just gonna go wrist tight. This is aluminum, so don't overdo it. Grab your electrical connection, put that back up in. Grab your resistor, plug that back in. Next, we're gonna go and tighten up our drain plug with a new drain plug, and then we're gonna go fill the transfer case. All right, so what we're gonna do now is put our drain plug in. I'm just gonna take some of this fluid that leaked off, and we're just gonna put it around the seal. Like working from the back here. It's hard to see what I'm doing. All right, this is gonna go to 60 Newton meters. I'm gonna use a crow's foot just cause of the space issue. Ended up right around 63 Newton meters, but crow's feet can be not 100% accurate. So always, whenever I use them, I always like to go back, feel it for myself. And we added a little bit more, nothing crazy. So now we're gonna jack the transmission and transfer case back up all the way. All right. And we're gonna swing over back to the passenger side rear of the transfer case and start filling this thing up. So we are using genuine BMW DTF1 and I'm currently pumping it into a fluid transfer pump. And we are going to fill this thing up until it overflows. Right around there. Gonna go a little bit more. We're gonna let it go until it becomes a slow drip. All right, now we can reinstall our fill plug and torque it to 60 Newton meters as well. All right, so now that the transfer case is full of fluid and our fill and drain plugs are torqued to spec, let's get that brace back into place and torque everything up so we can finish up this project. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is get that bolt back in place. And sometimes this can be a little worse than others. So I'm gonna lower this back down, make it a little easier on us, give us some flexibility to work with. And get the brace back into place. This can be a little, Weird. This just normally involves like a good amount of wiggling. Normally from up front is probably your best bet. Okay. You gotta go kind of sometimes up like this and push against the part that's not quite lined up. Normally it's not that bad. This one is probably one of the worst ones I've, I've done and I've done 10 of these. So for the sake of the video that it's pretty good, but yours shouldn't be that awful. So now, you're gonna try to get this bolt through. It can be a pain. I think what I'm gonna do is actually kinda hammer it through. Be careful when doing this so that you don't screw up the threads. There you go. Usually the less hits, the better. We're gonna put the 18 mil back on the back. the 18 millimeter wrench back on the back. I'm gonna tighten up that 16 millimeter bolt. All right, we're gonna to torque this bolt down to 68 Newton meters. All right, so just like that, torqued. The spec, we're gonna bring our transmission stand back into place. We're gonna jack everything back up. Alright. Lost this guy. Alright, I'm gonna get these back in. Then you have these three on the other side. I like to get them all in first, it kind of centers everything out properly. Lightly squeeze back. In. 
All right, we're gonna torque those to 19 newton meters now. Just crisscross these. All right, at this point we can lower the transmission stand and move it out of the way. And we can put our two plastic shields back up. All right, we can get out from underneath the car and go reset our codes and adaptations. All right, so now that we are back connected to the car, key on, engine off, we are back in Pro Tool. We're going to go to X Drive System. We're gonna to go to Functions, Calibrate System, Confirm. So you can hear the transfer case calibrating. We're going to go to adaptation and oil reset and confirm. So it says make sure the engine is off and the ignition is on before proceeding, which is the case. Resetting oil wear is what it says currently. And operation successful, so now that's gone. We can go to functions and see if there's anything else we wanna do, which we do not wanna do anything else. So once we're done with that, we can go to drivetrain, okay, stability control. Go to functions, calibration, calibrate. Ah, actually, we don't need to do anything there. Maintenance reset, don't need to do anything there. All right, so we are all set there. No action needs to be taken for chassis. And we can go back to multi-ECU, read errors. So transmission is the first one to pop up. X-Drive system already, the code has cleared. So just by resetting the adaptation and calibrating the transfer case module. We know the actuator was working because when we just heard it calibrate, that's it working. So that makes a lot of sense. Stability control is still throwing those codes for transfer case internal. There's no fault strategy or insights for that one. I'm not sure if I did that one twice, so we're gonna just double check. Yeah, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go clear errors. It's rescanning. So no errors appear to be there. For stability control, it's just that rear brake pad sensor. So we're gonna just clear one more time just because I thought I was specifically in stability control. Now we're gonna do the entire system. I'm gonna walk my way back over to the car, start it up, and we should immediately know if the codes are back. Getting into the car. See, no ABS light, no 4x4 light, no DSC light, trash control, all that's gone. We have a TPMS light on just because we have no TPMS in our tires. The brake light is on because of a broken brake pad wear sensor, and obviously I don't have my seatbelt on. So that did fix our issue. So that shows how to diagnose, repair, and replace a transfer case actuator on an E90 328XI. This might be relative to a 330XI, 335XI, pretty much anything on the E90 chassis and even other chassis from this era of BMW with a similar transfer case and actuator. As always, thanks for watching Bathhouse TV. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, send this video around to anybody who needs help, and hopefully you'll see us again in the future.